Inflammatory bowel disease is a chronic condition which causes inflammation in the lining of the gut. It comprises two main conditions, ulcerative colitis, where that inflammation is limited to the large bowel, the colon, and Crohn's disease, where the inflammation can occur anywhere within the gut, from the mouth, throughout the intestines, up to the anus. It occurs when the immune cells that line the gut and normally tolerate our resident gut bacteria suddenly become allergic to the normal bacteria in your gut. And that allergic reaction causes inflammation and that inflammation is what drives symptoms. In terms of the causes of the condition, why it occurs in some people and not others, there's definitely a genetic tendency, but it's not as straightforward as something like cystic fibrosis where there's a single gene. In fact, there are likely many genes, each of which contribute a small amount of risk. There are also key environmental exposures such as smoking and diet that play a role in the start and actually in the natural history of the disease. Underneath, there's abnormalities within the gut bacteria and also, as mentioned, within the gut immune system. When a patient develops inflammatory bowel disease, depending on the location of the inflammation, they tend to get loose stool or diarrhea, often containing blood. They may get nasty stomach pains. They may have fevers, lose weight, feel fatigue, and even get inflammation in areas outside of the gut, such as the eyes, the skin, the joints, uh, and uh, the liver. In order to diagnose inflammatory bowel disease, there are a series of tests that will likely get organised. These include blood tests to look for inflammation in the blood, a marker of inflammation in the gut, to check for anemia and vitamin deficiencies. Sometimes there are stool tests, poo tests, to exclude infections, which are a common uh, alternative diagnosis, and also to look for inflammation in the stool. But actually, the key tests that allow a diagnosis of inflammatory bowel disease to be made are endoscopy, a colonoscopy where a camera is put into your bottom, wiggled all the way around the gut in order to look for inflammation. We also use imaging with either MRI or ultrasound as a key diagnostic tool for areas of the bowel that, that are out of reach of a standard endoscope. It has a spectrum of effects on the body. So there are some people who have it very mildly, uh, may only have an occasional flare of the disease, and actually for the vast majority of the time, their disease is well controlled but it can be much, much more severe. If the inflammation is extensive, extends through the thickness of the gut, and very severe, you can get uh, significant symptoms and on occasions require operations to remove sections of damaged gut. So the severity for an individual patient is very variable and it may also vary across the natural history, the duration of the disease. So when I think about how to treat an individual patient with inflammatory bowel disease, be it Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, I'm thinking of two key goals. I want to get the patient better and I want to keep them better because these are chronic inflammatory diseases. In terms of better, I think obviously about uh, improving uh, all symptoms, but it's also important to heal the lining of the gut because it's the healing of the lining of the gut that prevents future flares of the disease and also disease progression. But I'm also keen to make sure that we can reverse every impact that the disease might have on a patient's life. Their ability to work, their ability to exercise, their fatigue levels, their mood, even their personal relationships. So it's a very holistic treatment. In terms of the uh, strategies that we can use, well, that's very much dependent on the location and the severity of the disease, and it includes tablets, injections, and infusions. Most of the treatments that we use aim to suppress that immune reaction, the response of the immune cells in the gut uh, to the gut bacteria. And they can be very broad acting, such as drugs like steroids, which are very effective, but do have a range of side effects. Or many of the newer targeted therapies are able to improve disease by 
blocking a single inflammatory pathway and therefore they can be both more effective but also safer. Now, of course, the correct therapy for any individual will depend very much on, on the uh, location, as I said, and severity of the disease, but also factors relating to the patient, their age, other illnesses they may have and treatments they may be on, as well as the stage of their life and, and how the disease is currently affecting them. So, so treatment for inflammatory bowel disease is very much a, a personalised process. There is no doubt that the most frequent question we get asked by patients is, what should I do about my diet? What can I eat to improve my disease? And, and I think I always answer this by saying there are two very different questions with two very different answers. There are some very specific circumstances in which the diet that you take can be used to improve the inflammatory disease activity. That's only in Crohn's disease, and traditionally it's a very short-term treatment that's used as a bridge to alternative treatments, mainly because the diet involves cutting out the vast majority of normal foods and replacing them with uh, uh, milkshake-like drinks in which the food is already digested, so it's, it's much easier to absorb from the gut, and obviously that's quite challenging to do. There is a second question that is equally important though, which is that can I modify my diet and improve the symptoms of inflammatory bowel disease? And the answer to that is undoubtedly yes. I mean, it's, it's no surprise that what we eat, uh, what we put into our mouth affects how our gut feels, what symptoms we get. And yes, you can definitely modify your diet to improve symptoms, both when the disease is active, but also uh, when the disease is not active. The important thing to remember there is that by modifying your diet and improving your symptoms, you may not actually be improving the activity of the disease. And so that kind of strategy always goes hand in hand with some form of medical treatment.